The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next three hours, I am your host. I am your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 11 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates right around this little third blue planet from the sun, as well as on Talk, uh, talk Stream Live. If you'd like to send an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. Reaches me right here to the desk in our studios on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our radio website, Radio. Dot com. My first guest tonight, Exxon Nation, is Christopher St. Booth. He is an 11 award wing producer, director, composer, author, and production designer of films, TV, and documentaries for Sci-Fi Channel, Chiller, NBC Universal, Sony Pictures, Redbox, Amazon, Destination America, Discovery Travel Channel, Netflix, iTunes, Disney, Hulu, Vimo, YouTube, Red Spooked, Productions, AT&T, Roku, Apple and foreign distributors worldwide. He's the CEO of Spook Productions and Twin Talk Entertainment. And he's known for his films Dead Still, uh, that was on Sci-Fi, Death Tunnel for Sony Pictures, The Possessed, Spooked, Children of the Grave as seen on Sci-Fi, The Exorcist File on Redbox, and Dark Place on Amazon. Joining me now to share his 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 own outlook into the paranormal and why he is so engrossed about it is Christopher St. Booth. And Christopher, welcome to the x Christopher, are you there? Oh, there you are. I'm, yes, I'm here. Uh, welcome to the x Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And tell us, Christopher, where does your interest in the paranormal uh, come from? I think... I think mostly it's because I, I, way back in 2004, we were shooting a, a film Death Tunnel for Sony Pictures. Mm-hmm. While we were shooting it, uh, it started to get really haunted on the set we, uh, we were filming on, and um, it went crazy. And after that, I just got obsessed, and, and here I am. All right, so on the set that you were filming that, that got you into the, the paranormal, what happened? What was it that happened during the filming? Well, we, we went down to scout. Like, you know, we all going to yeah. go down there, find out where the lights are going to go, where the cables, what we're going to need. And we uh, we were doing it at a place called Wavy Hill Sanatorium. I don't know if you know of that oh, place. Oh, sure. But... Yeah, we've done, we've done many uh, shows on that. Okay, cool. Well, we went down there, and we were in the death tunnel, and we were – basically scouting walked to the very bottom of the tunnel mm-hmm. and then um I turned around and everybody pretty much left me behind they, had, they moved over to some other place and, <laughs> and i was left behind and I went okay well that's cool and then suddenly this feeling came on to me like a feeling of oppression right depression a very scary feeling and i had never felt that strong of that feeling before and uh, i took a picture of, of just what was in front of me or what I felt was in front of me. Mm-hmm. And then I ran up to the top of the tunnel and I got very ill. Oh, I didn't no. think too much about it. But two weeks later, when we were going through the photos of the scout pictures, 
I was I looked at what we I had filmed and uh, taken a picture. I'm actually recorded audio too, and there was a picture of this little girl standing in front of me, and she looked like she had no eyes, and it was an, an incredible clear picture. It was very scary, and on the audio recorder was mm -hmm. a scream, and right then it was like, oh my god, you know, it just hits you, and I just knew that I I was I just got obsessed with mm -hmm. I got to find out what's going on here. And that's where it all started. So prior to that, had you had any interest in the paranormal? Not really. I mean, Philip and I, my twin brother, who's actually my partner as well, mm -hmm. um, we had seen um, something what we thought was uh, in our bedroom. And we it was basically saw this old lady walking across the uh, bedroom uh, wall there. Right. And it was so scary. We both screamed at the same time. And my mom come running in and she goes, what's going on? what's going on? And I said, uh, I told her and she goes, that sounds like it was your grandmother. And I have to tell you, you know, we just got a call and she just passed away, you know? So that was like really creepy, but yeah. I never really got interested in it until I asked you, know, we went down and started shooting this horror movie. And then there was some, I mean, if you're involved in the paranormal, it's like when it calls out to you, pretty much you're hooked. And that's what happened. Why do you think in the year 2016, so many people are hooked on the paranormal. Well, I think I think that it's, you know, people are looking for answers. And I think, personally, I think life is tough. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. the world is very in a hard place. I think, um, for me personally, knowing, that, knowing what's, you know, after life, so to speak, it's more of a calming feeling. And, and you feel more secure about your life, knowing that where you're going and, you know, there is another world after you die. And so personally, I think there's just a lot of activity in the world. Mm -hmm. And I really truly believe that people are looking for more of a calmer way to deal with things. And I think in the paranormal, not only is it causes a lot of adrenaline, obviously. It's, sure. like, it's like going on a roller coaster ride. It really is, especially when things start rolling. Um, I just think it's just very fascinating. And, and people that believe it, it changes their whole life. I've got to tell you something. Um, over the years, I have seen the switch go from extraterrestrials, UFOs, angels, to ghosts and hauntings. And ghosts and hauntings seem to be the topic that's sticking around. Yeah, well, aliens kind of go up and down. You know, aliens yeah. are here, then it goes back to ghosts, and it goes back to aliens, and it goes Bigfoot for a little bit, you know, <laughs> and then it just, you know, other legends of different kind of mountain monsters and then it goes back to ghosts and then it goes back to aliens i'm actually have a very very fascination with aliens right now i'm, I'm very interested in in doing some stuff on that now mm -hmm. so um when we come back for this from this uh, two minute break uh christopher i'd like to talk to you about devil or angel uh i'm sorry angel or devil sure and um i th thank you very much for joining us tonight and exo nation if you would like to find out more about um, our guest tonight, Christopher St. Booth. You can go to facebook.com forward slash the hyphen booth hyphen brothers hyphen films hyphen fan. Uh, I'm sorry, fans hyphen page. Wow. Uh, dash one, two, seven, four, two, eight, zero, four, seven, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, or just, just, just Google them. They'll come up. I promise you. And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Home from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. 
This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Join High Tech with Corey K. Weekly here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. From the world of computers to the ever-popular computerized gadgetry that are becoming part of our everyday life and living and society. From kids and their gaming devices, teens and their smartphones, to the applications of personal and business computers. From hardware to software, from standalone units to network computers. Join high-tech guru Corey K. weekly right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network as he takes on the topics that will be of use and great value to the international audience of the Exxon Broadcast Network. High Tech with Corey K. weekly. Weekends at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Exonation. Nation, Christopher St. Booth is our special guest this hour. www. I've got a blog spot uh, here. www. Brothers, uh, Boothbrothers. and they have a YouTube channel. That's a YouTube. dot com forward slash user forward slash Spooked TV, and on Twitter, Spooked TV as well. Tell us about Angel or Devil. Well, Angela Devil is, uh, I think actually it's my third book, and uh, I wanted to touch something different than the other books I had written. I had written a book before um, actually concerning the real Exorcist diary mm -hmm. from the movie The Exorcist. So what I wanted to do is uh, do something a little bit different. And usually what I do for even our scripts for our films is I do major research. And I've been very lucky about getting jo real journals and diaries off of stories that are, you know, happened in the 18, late 18th century. And I came across a journal that was very fascinating, and it was written just on the turn of the century, and it was basically about what would happen if an exorcism didn't work. Mm. Really fascinated me, because we all know you get possessed, and then you get exercised, and usually you, you go back to work the next day. You know, everything's all nice and calm, but what happens if one didn't work and that really fascinated me so this story is basically based in um the turn of, turn of the century and it goes all the way up into like 1950 and it's about a, a girl that's been possessed about 12 different times and it's a true story and basically she goes to um iowa to get an exorcism in a convent how scary is that obviously in a convent by nuns especially and in iowa Whoa. Oh, yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you die, well, it looks scary. Um, but anyway, you go, and it's an incredible story. But basically, we find out what, you know, what the story goes on. And basically, there's a lot of dark magic in it. She was cursed. And mm -hmm. basically, the concept is if, if an exorcism returns, if the possession returns and ex exorcism does not work, it comes back times seven. Oh, boy. And I thought, e evil times seven is an incredible subject matter to write this book on. And I did. And it's just an incredible story of a very true event. And that's what I, I think is scary is the truth. There's nothing scarier than that. So that one's uh, Angel or Devil. How, you know, how, how relevant do you think the, the battle between good and evil is when dealing in the paranormal? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's relevant in everything mm -hmm. because you have to have it. I mean, it's balanced, so, you, you know, you can't have good without bad, and that's why God will never win, or neither will the devil, because they need each other to keep the fight going. Yeah. You know, and that's what's what everybody has to realize. You're going to have the bad days. You're going to have the good days. Mm -hmm. And in the paranormal, where the structure really gets broken is if you get too obsessed, you know, the wrong way, like the dark side, because then it could take you down. 
I had written a book uh, called Paranoia, and basically that that touches that concept, meaning that you don't really know now if it's something you've picked up like a hitchhike, a ghost, when you go to these places and something, you know, piggybacks on your way home. Right. And you bring, bring this negativity or this energy home. You don't really know now if you brought something home or just something is going wrong like things do go wrong. Yeah. And you don't know if it's, you're being paranoid or it really is a paranormal situation. So I think what's really important when you do paranormal investigation is you have to have your head on your shoulder. You really do, because if you don't and you have a lot of baggage you're packing, it could really show up to what you start bringing back. You know, I, I've asked a number of paranormal investigators different questions, and one of the ones that that was sent to me by a listener that, just kind of blew my socks off was if you go to a garage sale, if you go to an antique store and you buy something, you don't know if there's anything attached to it. Could you be bringing something into your home? And they said, yeah, by all means. So I wonder, uh, Christopher, how many homes are haunted because people have brought property into their homes where they really don't know the origin of the property in the first place? Well, I think it's got to do with you do it anyway. It's with Mm -hmm. energy. Imagine, say, you move into a house where somebody had died or maybe the family had had been arguing just all the time. Right. And it leaves that bad stain, that bad vibe. I mean, obviously, you walk into a room, you can feel bad vibes, good vibes. This is a great – like, say, you're trying to rent a house, buy a house. You go, like, something – Something happened. There was something bad about the house, or there's something good about it. It carries an energy, whether it's good or bad, and you will det- detect it. Obviously, depending what you've gone through through your life. So, bringing something home like clothes that somebody had worn mm-hmm. that possibly was a negative person and had sort of a negative energy, you, you at least you must try and cleanse it, and hopefully that will work. And you have to believe that that will work. Otherwise, you might be stuck with you know having that a headache or you know, a bad day or stuff might go wrong for you because there was a bad energy around it. You know, we we hear stories about exorcisms with people who actually have a deep belief in some sort of religious philosophy. And I have never heard of an exorcism or, or a possession case with an atheist. Well, you've got to. I mean, obviously you have to believe, right? I mean, yeah. Whether you it's inter- interesting when I did um, I did a, a movie called The Exorcist File mm-hmm. and it was basically the true story of what really happened in the movie The Exorcist and that time we were the only ones who went into the real house and the real bedroom mm-hmm. that it all really happened in and and imagine going into that after you know really that was the scariest movie I've ever seen The Exorcist sure. you know so I had the real di- a copy of the real diary which actually I turned into a book. The, Exorcist diary, and that is where it gets really crazy because whether you see, was the boy, it was a boy and not a girl yes. in real life. If was the boy really possessed, or was he just mentally ill? Mm-hmm. I mean, what is it really? Well, the point is, did it? It doesn't really matter in some senses if he was possessed. If he believed he was possessed, an exorcism would work. Right. See, so if you have to believe mm-hmm. in God, you have to believe in the devil. I don't know. In in the concept of a- a- atheists, they're not really believing in the devil or God, right? Unless you were going to the Church of Satan. But is but isn't that ironic that people who are atheists, according to all the research that I've read and all the people that I've talked to, don't get possessed? Well, I mean. I guess it depends what you call possessed. I mean, I've been reading a lot of, of new stuff mm-hmm. lately of, of a project that I'm actually um, developing, and I realized that, uh, which is scary as hell if you think about it, but possession or, or, or what we call taking over, it could be just turning into being becoming not a very good person. Well, and I'm not saying that, saying that obviously being an sure. atheist, you're not being a bad person, but I'm saying you could start being this person that you're not meant to be because you're slowly being taken over by a different energy. But how do we I know? Really how, know. How do we know that a lot of these so-called possession cases aren't psychosomatic? Ninety percent of them are. Really, eh? 
without a doubt. Ninety mm. percent of them really are, and it's very rare you find one that there truly is. And you need, you know, the kind of proof you really need is obviously talking in different languages, right. you know, superhuman strength, uh, levitating, those kind of things. The maybe the knowledge of Latin you've never known it before. Um, even doing something that you never did, maybe you couldn't play piano at all, you couldn't sing, and suddenly now you're an incredible mm -hmm. singer, you're an incredible piano player, and you've never touched it. You're doing things you've never done before. But it's can all we... kind of, something's taking over your energy. All right, speaking in tongues is part of receiving the Holy Spirit as well. So, you know, let's, let's just put that one aside. And then... For a person who has never played the piano and now can start playing the piano, a lot of people would say, well, that's because in a past life they were able to do this. Yes, and that could be, a, yeah. uh, there's a very, there's a, in my book, Angel of Devil, we talk about the fine line meet between reincarnation mm -hmm. and possession, which I found interesting when you do research on that. There's never a case of an angel possessing anybody. In fact, the Vatican does not believe angels possess anybody. It's only demons that possess where angels or inspiration and, and they, you know, they kind of, you know, inspire you to go that, that direction. So that could be a form of, mm -hmm. of no, no part. The situation is when you get taken over and start doing bad things is the concept. So when you start doing bad things, this is when the term possession comes into, into play when it's, not you're not doing good things you're doing bad things well it's the concept is you well if, if you go by the concept of what it's supposed to be mm -hmm. there's a god there's there's an, there's an angel there's a devil basically right. okay there's lucifer and then there's god 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 and lucifer knows everything basically the same way they know that you're a good person or a bad person mm -hmm. so lucifer's main job is to make sure that you do things bad so you don't do something that's really great that helps mankind that's the whole concept of it. So basically, when they they lure you off the tracks, they turn you into an alcoholic or right. a drug addict, and you start doing some really terrible things like murder and rape and whatever it may be. They're mm -hmm. taking you away from the person that you are meant to be, the person that you are born to be, which is a beautiful energy that is there to help mankind and create something. So you know, the concept of creating a right. bomb where it kills a lot of people. So hypothetically, if we were to get rid of religion, we'd also get rid of evil. Yes. Yeah, we would. It would be a rough world because you wouldn't have anything to believe in. As long If you believe, see, I, I never had a problem with people believing yeah. in whatever they wanted to. I just had a problem when people didn't believe in anything. Right. That was my problem. I didn't care what mm. they believed in. You know, the devil, God, even not believing, being an atheist is cool, mm -hmm. too. But you've got to at least at least believe in yourself at that point. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, you and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour, Chris. Please stand by. Exxon Nation, Christopher St. Booth is our very special guest this hour. Great topic. Great conversation. Great work. Congratulations on all the wonderful things you've done, Christopher. Thank you. And you and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. This is news from the Exxon. I'm Amanda Curran. NASA has just posted new pictures of Saturn as it undergoes its change of seasons. The Cassini mission has compared photos taken of the shadow of Saturn on its rings, which had stretched across all of its rings earlier in the Cassini mission, but now barely makes it past the Cassini division. Researchers point out that as the planet nears its north hemisphere solstice in May 2017, the shadow will get even shorter as during the solstice, the shadow's edge will be about 28,000 miles from the planet's surface, barely making it past the middle of the B ring. You can check out the pictures at nasa.gov slash Cassini. From Saturn to Venus, new research now suggests that Venus may not have always been the hottest planet in the solar system and that it may have even been habitable for life. Researchers have pointed out for the last few years the fact that Earth and Venus are surprisingly similar in size, density, and composition and that their close proximity suggested that they were probably formed using the same base materials. 
New climate models even indicate that up to 3 billion years ago, Venus could have had mild Earth-like temperatures and liquid oceans. Scientists are still hoping to answer how such a planet could start off so similar to Earth and then change so drastically, and NASA is now actually considering sending more missions to Venus for insight into those very questions. A new audio clip posted online claims to be evidence of a man possessed. Jamie Barrientos says for the last several weeks, his neighbor, who seems quite normal during the day, becomes totally demonic every night during the hours of 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. The audio captures his groaning and growling, possibly in different languages, while accompanied by the sound of banging furniture. Barrientos stated that the noises got so loud and frequent, police had to be called, where the neighbor apologized, attributing the outbursts to a vague illness. People who have listened to this terrifying clip have suggested everything from drug abuse to mental illness and even satanic ritual practice. The late night disturbances have yet to stop. I'm Amanda Curran, News from the XM. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. You can always check us out online. X Zone Radio TV is all the social media and our main radio site, XZoneRadio.com. Still to come on tonight's show in the next hour, Howard Bloom will be joining me. We've got so much to talk about. And um, then in the final hour, we have. Mark Anthony Wyatt joining us all the way from the United Kingdom. That's still to come here tonight in the X Zone. Christopher St. Booth is our special guest this hour. And Christopher, if you if you don't mind, I'd like to stay on the on the topic of possession because there's so many great movies out there that that, you know, when they came out, they just scared the hell out of everybody. Not only The Exorcist, but you had Poltergeist. And then of course you had the Amityville Horror. Christopher, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, so what was your take on the Amityville Horror? Um, well, I mean, it's I, I know a lot of people are involved with the owners, so mm-hmm. I kind of have some other behind-the-scenes takes on that. Right. I truly believe that, that it, again, it was my concept of what I believe is dark energy that creates people to do it. 
uh, you know, whether the chap truly was possessed or he was high on drugs, which which is a catch-22 mm-hmm. because it's kind of like the Annalise Michelle, which is the real um, Emily Rose. Right. You know, whether she was really ill and in a condition to, um, you know, hallucinate or she really was possessed. But one thing for sure, all these people, including the Amityville murderer, mm-hmm. they were under the influence of something or their immunity was really an all-time low, which is a cash 22 again you can see things but also you are open for possession at that point so whether i don't i couldn't really tell you if it really was a possession or mm-hmm. it was um you know a man-made thing but for sure when you do that kind of evil it definitely has a you know a devil ingredient is it you know uh, when you look at all the people that are in jail how many of those people do you think were actually put in there because of some sort of possession or evil entity taking them over for a time and bang the next thing you know they've committed so many crimes or a crime of great magnitude that they've ended up in jail um again like i said to my research um being a documentarian Mm -hmm. and dealing with the pretty much the truth or you know through um archived history and and what i can find and talking to whoever I can, family members, even if it's, you know, a decade old and in tracking them down, 90% of possessions are, um, you know, a mental illness. So, you know, it's really hard to say, but I, I really do believe there is, you know, some kind of dark energy that can linger and can make you do some pretty bad stuff. I don't think you're in jail if you're you know, you got a, an ounce of marijuana or you you know, you maybe you're stealing because you need to do something. But I think definitely if you always thinking, you know, you're a narcissist, you have no empathy at all. Use your actually your beginning ingredients to invite evil in is is basically having zero empathy and no compassion. And uh because if you put the devil on a psychiatry couch, yeah. you're gonna find out truly what a narcissist this guy really is. Yeah, you know the entire the entire scenario with the devil, you know, and and how he was kicked out of heaven and you know, the, the number of angels that, that followed him. When you look into the biblical times, the God of the, of the, um, of the, New Te- of the Old Testament was a very mean God. My God, look what he did. He destroyed an entire planet except for one family. Yes. Uh, you see, me, I, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I would never think of, of destroying my children. My God, I, w- I would jump off a cliff first. Uh, yeah, and- well, again, you know, the Bible was written by the most ultimate evil is man. You know, we don't really know. You know, I I believe in God and I do believe in Jesus. But how far you want to go into that, I don't know. But, you know, personally, you know, it's all written by man and man corrupts things. We can see it in the government every day. But if we're saying that that the Bible was written by man and man is the evilest, you know, how do we know that what is in the Bible is true? And how do we know that there is a God and there is a devil? It's all about belief, isn't it? Yeah. It always has been. It's yeah. what, it, you know, it's what works for you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what connects. The problem and the, and the sad thing, really what goes on is the fact that people hurt each other because they believe something different. Instead of realizing, hey, it's cool, you believe in what you do. See, I don't care what you believe in as right. long as you're not hurting somebody. And when you start hurting somebody, I have to say then, you know, you, maybe you're possibly dealing with the wrong belief system because okay. I don't believe anybody should hurt somebody, you know. Mm. And I think, you know, when you get into those kind of politics of religion and all that kind of stuff, it's a very tricky situation. I, my religion is more of a Buddhist thing where I really truly just believe in practicing very positive energy and, and, like and creating goodness and inspiration in the world. I like that. Congratulations. That's what we need today. It's what we have to have. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. (laughs) Exactly. You know, I believe that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And there are so many people these days who stick their head in the ground, their butts in the air, either waiting for the second coming of Christ or the extraterrestrials to land and take care of all their problems. And you know what? That's not going to happen. Well, I have my own verdict. on. I mean... You can be a crazy atheist as well as you can be a crazy Christian. And and the whole point is if you're crazy, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Listen, uh, 
you you've done the the documentary that you did on the Waverly. Yeah. Why do you think ghosts stay behind? Some stay behind, and others they just vanish into time. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I, I mean, I, my my own particular view on this, and it really is only my yeah. view. Everybody has their own view. Is it's about energy, bad, good. There's no bad or good energy. It's energy what you make it. So you take Waverly Sanatorium where thousands and thousands of people died on a, on a very terrible disease. And mm -hmm. through my documentary, I interview some people that were still, you know, made it through that hospital that are in their 90s and they've actually had all their ribs removed trying oh, to save them from tuberculosis. And um, even those people I interviewed, it's funny that they they felt the place was haunted even when they were there in 1940 and stuff, you know? And it's like, you've got a lot of really bad energy, just a lot of people that are depressed and a lot of people that's going to stay in a place. Just no, as you know, like a, a water stain, mm -hmm. it's going to stain it. So anybody that has empathy at all is going to feel it. Anybody that's sensitive is going to feel that when they walk in. That's what compassion is built of is a lot of empathy and compassion, obviously in the sense of that you feel stuff, you feel what happened before, you know. And so when they're hanging around, I believe it's just like Children Ghosts, which I, I did a show on Children Ghosts, which was a very tough show to do called Children of the Grave. It was a, hard, a very hard show to do because of, you know, obviously yeah. finding ghost children. But it's because they don't know what happened. And you've, in, a, in a, that tuberculosis hospital, they went there for a cure. So maybe they died still mm -hmm waiting for that cure maybe they're there waiting to be cured and they have nowhere to go maybe you know they were thrown out I, and back then people actually you were arrested if you had tb and taking away so it wouldn't spread like very much like the plague it was called the white plague the white death so you know soldiers who get killed and think the war is still going on it's up for a you know a sensitive parent investigator to let close that gate to close that you know, to close that chapter and say, the war is over, they found a cure, you can go on now, you know, or, you know, your mommy's said it's okay that you can move on, she's in heaven now, or she's over there, you don't need to stay here, you know, mm -hmm. your mommy's not here, you know, these are the kind of things that you should practice as a sensitive paranormal investigator. A lot of the investigators that, that I've seen on some of these so-called reality shows are anything but respectful. You know, they go out, they taunt, and, and they, they make it sensationalistic. I would imagine that's because that's what the network wants these days. Um, <laughs> I have my own view on that, too. Being involved and obviously being on a lot of channels and right. meeting a lot of people, I have to tell you a very quick story. I sure, think it says do. it all. is about this a, a very high-flaunting paranormal investigator who's very good-looking and da-da-da-da, and he's and, Due to that fact, he yeah. became very popular. But due to that fact, he um, also became very arrogant. And it's really funny to try to talk to him because you go ahead and one-on-one -on -one and say you want to talk about the paranormal, you want to talk about anything. These chaps won't give you the time of day. Really? And you have to say to them, how can you talk to the afterlife when you can't even talk to life? Exactly. How can you do that yeah. when afterlife and the paranormal is all about being sensitive, being honest, and being real, being mature, and not being fake? Yeah. But all these people are pretending this. But you understand they're in an extremely amount of pressure because if you don't have a ghost in 10 minutes, you've got to get one. Otherwise, your show is canceled. But what does that do to the reality? And, you know, you're, you do documentaries. You know what real reality is all about. You deal with the truth. You don't deal with sensationalism. And and you and I both know that the truth sometimes is boring. But it's the truth. And I you know I, I don't care if you don't have a ghost in a show. I don't care if the if the the topic of the show is mostly the history of the building, the history of the people. To me, that's just as exciting, if not more, than people, you know, banging around using shaky video images and, and night shot to be sensationalistic. Well, I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, sci-fi, when they picked up, 
we did about seven shows for them. When they picked up our first two shows, they actually said to us, we don't care. And, yeah. you know, if you get ghosts, we want your, the way of your story. We want the storytelling. That's far more important. Like, for instance, we don't care if it's haunted. We want to know why it's haunted. And, you know, the, the truth, yeah, if you, as a storyteller and a good mm -hmm. storyteller, you can, you can tell the truth, but if you yeah. tell it the right way, you can make it very exciting. You can make it very emotional. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of truth about people just, you know, that are dying of old age and yeah. are forgetting. But if you tell it right, it can be very emotional. It can be very f fulfilling and very fun and very exciting. Yeah. So it, it has to be told by the right way. It has to be told. And, and the thing is, you know, there's not a lot of originality, I'm afraid, in the town we call Hollywood. Living in Los Angeles for 35 years now, I've seen it all. And, uh, you know, it's not a very, you know, uh, an imaginative place. That's why we're constantly getting revisions and reruns and, you know, see, uh, remakes of movies yep. and stuff. But, um, again, if the truth is told right, I mean, obviously there's a lot of really good movies based on books that are true books and they're, they're fabulous. I mean, I'm very much in the emotional side of anything we do. I don't care what it would be that we did. It's just about human uh, interest and human pain and, Human pleasure, it's, that to me is very fascinating and, and very controlling mm -hmm. when it's told the right way. But you see, that's because you're an honest person. I like to think so. Yeah. I mean, I understand, though. Yeah. I have to tell you, I do understand, hey, we got to pick it. I'm a producer, so I, you know, a lot of people send me a lot of demo stuff and say, hey, look at my ghost footage. And I'm looking, look at my ghost show. Can you take it to a network? And I'm looking, here they go. Night vision, okay, <laughs> somebody gets their shoulder touched, or well, there's a cold spot here. Then it goes to a front two, you know, interview with them standing in front of some green screen yeah. with T-shirts on, yeah. you know, with the name of the company on. And I'm going like, you're doing it exactly the same way everybody's done it, yeah. you know, and I, and I don't care if it sells or not. I'm not, I don't want any part of it. It's just, it's just not, it's not it's boring. Yeah. You know, that is what's boring to me. Same so, old, um, same old. You know, yeah, same old. You know, I, I, this is my personal opinion that there are also so many channels out there and programmers are clamoring for programming. Oh, yeah, which is a good thing. It is. It's a good thing. It it's is. It's a good thing for the independent, being also obviously a filmmaker yeah. and, I, and independent distributor as well. I've, I'm pretty much done it all and I am still doing it all. Um, it's exciting, but it's also scary at the same time. So the best way to really approach this whole thing is to be real yeah. and hopefully you know your reality you know is something that people is interested in and also do something that is different you know and that's exciting and that's you know obviously my great advice to anybody that is trying to do do that out there is be be yourself be real but also do it different in all the places that you've done your 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 productions besides waverly uh waverly hills where would you say the most haunted place is that you and your team went to to do a uh, to do a production that you and your team have said man that one takes the cake well all of our shows you know whether we went to native american mm -hmm. um burial grounds which we shot a, a a show called Soul Catcher, which actually was a tribute to Native Americans, helping them, you know, people realize that that really was the first genocide. Um, obviously, being from Canada, you know how the situation is there, too. Yeah. Uh, I lived in Canada for a while as well. Uh, I should Vancouver. So um, I think everything has a, a very serious, heavy feeling. Like, I know that when we were there, the Indian burial grounds, we had saw, you know, we had dealt with the elders and mm -hmm. some serious incredible energy from there but the 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 dark I, I guess the dark energy always stands out most so the exorcist house the real exorcist house which is in st louis missouri is is and i, I did two shows i did um the documentary and i did a live event for destination america there which was a form of a live exorcism there uh, last halloween is a very serious dark house it has got nothing positive in it at all and um, these are the kind of places I don't even want to go in if you even pay me to go in. So how do you, um, how do you and your team protect yourself from not 
you know, bringing anything back with you that you really don't want to bring back with you. Well, everybody has a similar own belief system. Some people believe in smudging, right. um, you know, holy water, being blessed by a priest, being protected that way, wearing a lots of crucifixes. I know that day I wore about five crucifixes. <laughs> and, you know, it didn't really matter. The point is you're dealing with something that is, you know, good against bad. So obviously your crucifix is, is rec- you know, is the icon for right. good and you're dealing with something that's bad. So that would make sense to wear anyway. But but it made me feel comfortable. And that is, I think, what you need. You need to bring in what makes you feel comfortable. And also, I'm a very positive thinker. And I really um, try and I walk away. The minute anybody gets negative, I will walk away. Um, I Because obviously I'm going to pick it up having you know, quite a bit of empathy. Being an sure. artist, you're very sensitive. I will walk away. And at that house, you wanted to walk away from. All right, stand by, Chris. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exxon Nation, Christopher St. Booth is our special guest. And here's a couple of ways that you can find out more about Christopher. On Facebook, uh, uh, here's their blog spot, boothbrothers.blogspot.ca. And do their YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash user spooked TV. And on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash spooked TV. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. Foundation focusing on evidence based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, <coughs> meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Exonation Christopher Booth is our special guest. And um, 
I must tell you, uh, Christopher, I've had a wonderful time this hour. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, well, thank you very much for having us, having uh, me, actually, <laughs> and uh, and you too. I'd love to have you on any time. And um, one of our listeners would like to know what your favorite or most challenging, and they underline this and they put it in quotes, so I guess this is the key word here, challenging UFO case. Um, I actually have a few that I've experienced personally when I was living in Malibu, California. And, of course, if, if you know that area quite well, on the Zuma Beach area, it's been pretty, pretty hotbed for paranormal, yeah. I mean, paranormal, supernatural, UFO-type incidents, as well as I lived out in the Mojave Desert, which is right next to Edwards um, Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. So I used to witness quite a few crazy stuff, and I did a lot of research. So my, my main interest really is the area – um, 51 type stuff. Yeah. I'm very fascinated with stuff. And also I have a, my own theory of the concept of which is a very fascinating one, but everybody writes sh uh, shadow people. Yes. Um, authors ghosts. And through a lot of my research and my EVP work and the stuff that we've captured, we've got quite a lot of um, alienated tones in our EVPs that are very, almost reminiscent of brainwashing feeling type things like, like sort of a rhythm, a yeah. rhythm. And then the next minute you would be kind of copying that rhythm into a say, like, look over there, look over here or something, whether they're trying to say, Hey, look at us or try to lead you away from them. But I, I started to realize that we have really no proof that these shadow people that we're all saying are ghosts are truly ghosts. They really could be extraterrestrial as well. I would imagine they could also be interdimensional. Exactly. Very yeah. paradigm, yeah. very coming out of a, a paradigm world, indeed. Yeah. And and that's very exciting when you start thinking that kind of stuff. And it's also very positive. It is. So because you're starting I'm very to, excited by that. You're stuff. starting to think outside of the box. And you're yes. asking, what yeah. if? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What are, your just, what are your final thoughts for the Exo Nation tonight, Christopher? Um, just that I'm excited by... Um, the way um, things are going in, in, in Hollywood. I mean, I'm excited by the, everybody's dark fascination for more um, dark stuff. I mean, it's incredible what's going on with The mm -hmm. Conjuring 2 being so successful and also um, The Exorcist on television, which is yeah. very fascinating as well. You know, the, the TV series they got going. And I just think it's very, you know, incredible the darkness that a people seem to be drawn to i think in in that way we can um present it um emotionally cool if, if that makes it like for instance when i i'm working on a new paranormal uh possession type movie but i want it to have emotion in it i don't mm -hmm. want it just to be about the typical you know she gets possessed da, 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 da. but i want it to be very <laughs> emotional and it, it's really from the point of of you losing a child. Wow. And, and I just like that depth. I like depth in anything we do. And I'm really glad to see that a lot of the darkness in, in the productions of, of Hollywood is getting more depth in it. How about this? A person possessed falls in love with their possessor. Well, that's actually a really good point, too. Yeah. There you mm -hmm. go. I do. It's My... it, a sexy, that's a very sexy concept as it well. It is, isn't it? Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. Continued success, and I hope that I have the thank pleasure you. of talking to you again in the future. Until then, stay safe. Thank you very much. God bless, everybody. Bye-bye, Chris. Exo Nation, Christopher St. Booth has been my guest this hour. And um, what a guy. Thoroughly enjoyed uh, the conversation. And I'll be back on the other side of the news at about five minutes past the top of the hour with Howard Bloom. And as you'll notice, Exxon Nation, what we have done is we have cut back the commercial content because you, the Exxon Nation, asked us to. We do listen. We do read your emails. We do appreciate each and every one of you. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, with my good friend Howard Bloom. Don't go away. <laughs> 